God bless you. God bless you. This is Hampton III, Pastor of Village Hills Fellowship. I want to welcome you to our Wednesday Bible study. Today, we're going to continue in our book, Living for the Kingdom. Living for the Kingdom provides 115 lessons based on the commands of Jesus. And this is in fulfillment of the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Amen. To teach all nations, right? Making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost and teaching them to observe everything he commanded. So this is a part of that. So now, today we're, we're in lesson 84. That's parable of the 10 virgins. If you give me one second, I'll share my page and we get started. I pray that all of you are doing well. I'm wilding. I saw myself <laughs> smiling on the screen. Uh, join us for Bible study. Amen. I pray that y'all are doing good. Uh, I want to share real quick my, my reason for, not my reason, but I, I want to share my vision for Bible study. Amen. My vision for Bible study is to, is, is to there's a couple issues. One is to fulfill the Great Commission. Amen. To teach you to observe what Jesus commanded. I've felt that since the 90s. You've heard me speak about that. You've joined me. I've always had this this unction, right, just moved by the Spirit to be able to provide information to fulfill that scripture, that it doesn't become an omission, not, not only in my life, but in those that I may teach and share with. So that was number one. That's one of my biggest things that I'm focused on right now. Um, secondly, number two is being able to, um, being able to focus on equipping you to be a student of the word, amen? And I'll, and I'll show, you, show you why. So earlier today, I mean, this is my vision because I, as a teacher, yes, there's things I can teach you, but I want you to think about this like taking a self-defense class. If you go to a self-defense class, you're learning how to do specific moves to defend yourself in case some type of predator or aggressor or attacker comes upon you. You take the information you've learned and then you use it and exercise it. So that is my desire for all of us. It's not my desire for a Bible study is not for us to have another service where I sit back and preach to you. My desire is to get back to the 90s where we were kind of in our Bibles and we're studying, we're talking. That's my heart's desire to get back to and to equip you. So today, uh, one of my brothers sent me a video, a short clip, and asked me what my thoughts were. And in the clip, someone was stating that the Holy Ghost and the Spirit were two separate entities and provided scripture in Luke 4 and 1 and Acts 2 and 4. And when I looked at it, I was like, hmm, that's the first time I ever saw that. I've ever heard that before. Let me think about it for a second. So in thinking about it, I said, let me go to Esword, right? We use Esword all the time. I want to see what Strong's Concordance says about the word ghost and spirit, right? Because in, in the two scriptures, you had, it says the Holy Ghost, and then in, in the later part of the scripture, it says spirit. When, we, when I looked it up, it was the same exact word. And then as I was writing my brother back about my comments, the Lord brought to my remembrance about Ephesians 4, right? So we talked about Ephesians 4 just a little while ago, right? There's one body and one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father and all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. So that directly answers that issue. And he asked me a question, so I don't mind answering. But then we all get to the place where we're digging in the word and we're, and we're spending time being able to study and to, and to learn these things as opposed to just taking what someone says at face value. I'm not saying this person is a false teacher. I think that the teaching needs to be corrected, but I'm not saying they, they had any ill intent. I'm not sure what their intent was or motive. Don't know. But if I'm asked a question, then I want to be able to equip you. So this is why this book has been structured way, the way it is. Sometimes the book is structured where it seems like it's very simple questions. Like, man, that's a simple question. Why would you ask that? Right? I mean, just go ask me something deeper. But it's to get us in the habit of reviewing scripture to pull out information that is in the text. Because there's a lot of times when we just read through things, we miss it. And I, and I spoke to you before about the difference between driving, 
down the street and walking down the street. If I drive down the street, I may miss roses that are sitting in, in, in someone's yard. I may miss, miss the dog that's kind of kicking around somewhere. I may miss their trash here. If I'm walking, I begin to see it. So this is the process of meditation where I begin to look at scripture and I want to be able to be deliberate about the question. So that's why this book is structured the way it is to be able to look at scripture very, very particularly or deliberately and then use some of the other tools so that we get comfortable to engage in free Bible study tools. A lot of the tools in ESOR and the other ones that I share in this book are free that you can use to engage in God's word to help you. Amen. You can always ask me a question. You can always shoot me a message. Right. My brother lives on the on the other side of, of the country. Right. Shoot me a message, man. Within five minutes, I answer the question. But uh, that's my desire is that we're equipped, not just sitting back, you know, listen to me. I want to equip you. That's what Bible study is for. That's my heart's desire and my vision for Bible study, for all of you to be equipped to study the word for yourselves. Amen. Because you only see me, what, maybe a, maybe two hours out of 168 in a week. So there's a lot of hours that you're out there and that you may not reach out to me for different reasons. I'm not saying that you're doing anything um, with ill intent or like in, intensely trying to ignore me, but you're out there living life before the Lord. And so I want to make sure you're equipped, just like you're someone will be equipping a person for self-defense. I want to help you as well. So you'll be able to stand in those e evil days as the enemy is coming in with all the wiles, the wiles. Amen. Amen. So God bless y'all. I appreciate you. Rose, join us. Hey, Yolanda, God bless you. Appreciate you joining us today. Amen. God bless you. Uh, uh, Brother Thomas, Marlon, uh, Norman, appreciate you and Debbie joining us. Uh, We're going to get into um, Matthew here in a second. Matthew 25, lead 1 to 13. I do want to mention one more event that we have coming up on November 11th. It is a Veterans Day barbecue meal. And it's going to be at the local, at a local VFW. And this one will be, let me see. This one will be at VFW post 9186. That's at 650 VFW Boulevard. That is very close to my house. <laughs> so so, so I, if you're close to around the Brook City, uh, Brook City base area, it's right next to a row relatively close to the uh, library and YMCA that's over in that area. So we'll be there for a few hours. We're partnering with the Alliance Ministry of San Antonio to be able to serve veterans, right? It's Veterans Day on the 11th, so it's an opportunity for us to serve. Additionally, we may also join back with Blessing Bags, so that may be something that we do monthly. I also have a desire to do uh, other events in the same area on different weeks, and I'll talk to you guys about that. That may not be so much as a, this is what we do as a church, but maybe men's group, reach out to the men. Hey, brothers, y'all want to go downtown real quick or what have you. And then we'll go down there and just give out some items and, and pray. So um, that may be more, I guess, ad hoc. But at least as a church, that will we, that's what we have coming up. We'll do Blessing Bags again. That's going to be the last Saturday of the month at 10 o'clock. If you have something that you'd like to donate or you'd like to join us, please let me know. And then we'll, we'll uh, um, kind of give you some information depending on which you'd like to do. So we'll do those two for this month. And then we'll send something out about that. So with that, let's get into the word. We'll get a word of prayer and then we'll get going. I, well, I can't say that I won't keep you long. It's been a long week, y'all. We've been in that, that emotional intelligence class. We're coming to the end. We got two weeks left. And I promise you, man, we all been getting it. <laughs> Satan don't want us to grow I promise you but man we're growing and God's been doing a good work so y'all keep doing it you, you, you all that are in the class keep doing the good work right this is the good work right he who began a good work in you will see it to completion the things that we're going through is the good work keep standing keep believing keep trusting God amen you're all growing in Christ right even as we come together and we meet I can hear it amen we're coming, we're growing. Amen. So with that, I have one more note, right? I've been talking for almost 10 minutes. Hey, God bless you, Sister Jones. One more note. So for the beginning of the year, January 6, 2024, we're going to do our high five finances. So if you are in a situation, this is like an introductory finance course, or if you're like, hey, 
you know, my, my finances need a little tune-up. This is for you. This is not the course like, hey, I want to invest in stocks. You want to invest in stocks? Talk to me on the side. I've invested stocks for several years. I don't right now, but I have. So if you want some the deeper stuff, that hey, we can talk about that. But this is like, hey, I really want to do a clean house financially. I really want to get on a good foot. I want to build a great foundation. This is the class for you. I do have a free book on my website, but I'm going to rewrite the book completely. But it'll be a five-week class, maybe six, because one of the chapters we need to do a lot of work. So this is a lot of work we're going to get into. If you're married, bring your wife. It is free, or your husband is a free class. So you ain't got no excuse. Don't be sitting there talking about like, ah, I can't go. It's free. It's a free course. I believe you. it'll bless you. Amen? So if you're interested, in person, online, free. It's going to be on Saturdays at 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. Join us. So I have a book. I got it. As soon as I finish this class in the next couple of weeks for emotional intelligence, we're jumping in to get ready for high five finances. Amen. So if you want your your finances to be worthy of a high five, join us this January. Amen. And this is where we're going into more, right? The word for 24 is more. That's what God told me. It's more for 24. This year was conquer. So with conquer, you see that we've been going through a whole lot of stuff. It's been a, a challenge for us. The challenge has been getting us to a place of spiritual maturity and challenging the immature areas of our lives and the areas that we need to grow in in Christ. Amen. And some of you guys have experienced that. I've seen it and I also see the growth. So praise God for that. All right. Let's get into that. Let's get into this word. All right. Ten minutes in. All right, y'all. Let's get in word of prayer and then we move it on. So for the class, if you're interested, just shoot us a message. Just say, hey, man, I'm interested. Even put it down here. Even put it in the comments. I'm interested. You know, I'm ready for my high five. Let us know, and uh, we'll get you a schedule just, just like we did before. And we'll just meet on Zoom as we did. I think that kind of that time may work the best. But if you want to go go deeper and higher, this is where change comes for us. Amen. I, I want to see people living successfully, myself included, in, in Christ, and be good stewards over what God has given us. Amen. God has given us each different varying levels of responsibilities and resources. Then let's manage it well. Amen. Amen. So let's start with the parable of the, of the ten virgins. Let's go before the Lord. Gracious Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for this time you've given us, O oh God. I thank you for your faithfulness this week, Lord God. You've been with us, Lord God. You've never left us, nor forsaken us, Lord God. You've been faithful, Lord God. We just continue to wait on you, Lord God, to see your hand, Lord God. You told me even yesterday, be still and see the salvation of the Lord, Lord God. I see it, Lord God, and I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in each person's life, Lord God. Bless them abundantly as they come, Lord God, to, to engage and to hear your word, Lord God. May you minister to their hearts, Lord God, and bring something, give them something, Lord God, that they can take and chew on and meditate on, Lord God, and grow into, Father God. Allow them, Lord God, to be a little bit more like your son after this message. Father, we love you so much, and we thank you for this time you've given us, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so Matthew 25, 1 to 13. Amen. Let's get there. So I have a little bit of some Jewish tradition. Prayerfully, my brother Nathan Shaw, if he's going to be watching, normally he may watch on Saturdays. He don't get me for pronunciations. So I'm going to work it the best I can, brother. <laughs> you, can get, you can get me later. Amen. Matthew 25, 1. It says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamp and went forth to meet the bridegroom. I need to read my, with my glasses. And five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels in their lamps. Amen. And said, while the, um, and while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him into the marriage. And the door was shut. And afterward came also other virgins, the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know not the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Amen. So in question number one, so in the book, I believe it's on page 116. Let me make sure. But you are free 
with the book. You can download it for free. If you would like a, a hard copy, the, they are sold on Amazon. And that's, that's, that's completely up to you. But if you want a free book, you got no excuse. So page 116. So question number one, it says, why were the virgins waiting? Amen. And they were waiting to meet the bridegroom. So this is a process that's, that's in the Jewish tradition called erusin. Erusin. All right, I, I know I may have that wrong. So erusin, so which means engagement. So the marriage in Jewish traditions consists of three parts or three phases. It's the shidunkin, which is like the mutual commitment. You have the erusin, which is the engagement, and the nishuin, which is the actual marriage. So in the Eurusian, after this immersion, they, they enter into this, into the marriage, the hoopa, hoopa, a marriage canopy, which is symbolic of a new household being planned to establish a binding contract, right? The broom would give the bride money or a valuable object such as a ring and a cup of wine, which was customary to share to seal their covenant vow. In this public ceremony under the hoopa, the couple entered into the betrothal, the betrothal period, which typically lasted a year. Although they were considered married, they did not live together or engage in sexual relations. To annul this contract, the couple would need a religious divorce, which had to be initiated by the husband. So this is where you see Joseph and Mary. When Joseph, hey, God bless you, man. Thank you for joining us today. So this is where you see Joseph and Mary. So then they're in this divorce, they're in this this period, this Erusin period, and they're in this engagement time. And he's like, okay, we're not living together. We haven't had any type of sexual relations. So I'm in this period, but I need to submit for a letter of divorce. Amen. So in this time, during this period, the groom was to prepare a place for his bride while the bride focused on her personal preparations like wedding garments, lamps, etc. Amen. And although the bride knew to expect the groom after about a, a year, she didn't know the exact day uh, that he would come, right, or hour, right? And uh, he can come earlier than that, too. But it was the father of the groom who gave the final approval for him to return to collect his bride. So for that reason, the bride kept her oil lamps ready at all times, just in case the bride came in the night sounding his shofar, right, a ram's horn, to lead the bridal procession to the home he had prepared for her. So this parable that Jesus provided was, was very, they understood it very well because that was their custom. This is not part of our traditional custom. So when we think about marriage, we think about it a little bit differently or the engagement period than what is here. So for them, they understood like, okay, got it. You know, because this is what we, we may experience on a daily basis. And then this is why y'all, it's important for us as when you're talking about now in the book, I do have a in, in the book here. I have a chapter on exegesis and exegesis is just a word that means uh, explanation. So it's very important as we are reading about people that lived in a different time and culture than our own. It's important that we begin to understand the history and the background behind what scriptures that we read. We may not have, you can go, and when you're talking about Bible study, you can go as deep as you want, you can go as shallow as you want, but for greater understanding, right? And all our getting, let's get understanding. It talks about in Proverbs. So now I have an understanding where, now that some of you may not even uh, uh, knew that before. So then it begins to illuminate the scriptures even more. You're like, oh, okay, I understand now why, why Joseph was that way. Oh, I, can, I understand the parable a little bit more. So it's really important for us to have these opportunities, amen, to have a proper exegesis of scripture, to understand. You want to understand the scriptures as it was written to the original audience. We were not the original audience. We can capture something from this text. But remember I said before that the book of Matthew was written to Jewish to the Jews to prove that Jesus was the Messiah based on Old Testament prophecy. So that's why you see it in a lot of places as it was written. Right, is for them. It was not written originally for us, but there is information that is for us, right? There's canon to provide for us 
a means to grow in the Lord and to understand a historical text and also information for us to live by because these also contain Jesus' commands. Amen. So it's really important for us. Really important part. So that's something that's the beauty of Bible study. Amen. There's no there's no big need to finish everything in one setting. Sometimes you can study the Bible. I could be in one text for a whole week. Right. If, if you just if that's what it takes to dig in and get that's a part of meditation to really grow. And I want to turn over every stone. I want to turn over everything. So that's why we're asking some of these questions. We can answer them straight off. But then, no, I want to learn a little bit more about this background. Amen. All right. And if you all have a question, comment, please let me know. I got a little bit of dry mouth today. I don't know. I'm going to get all this, water, this, this juice, this drink with a little deep. OK. Because I do have my notes right. I can see the phone right here. So in question number two, it says, why were some wise and some foolish? This is in Matthew 3, Matthew 25, 3 and 4. Some took oil for their lamps. Those are wise. And then there were others that did not that were foolish. Then I wanted to see what this word meant in the Greek. So I looked it up in, in Strong's Concordance in Esau. And it meant like dull or stupid. Right. Like heedless, like like a morally blockhead, uh, apparently absurd, right? Foolish, foolishness. Right. So that's pretty, those are pretty harsh words to describe the women that did the virgins that did not have oil in their lamps. So then in question number three, it said, what were the virgins doing while waiting for the bridegroom to arrive? Amen. So while he while he delayed, they fell asleep. So they knew that at some point he was coming. We don't know when. We're tired. We fell asleep. So not we're, we won't say that there's something wrong with that. And I'm not going to try to stretch out a, a commentary because that's where normally you can be like, you know, you can stretch out like you can, shouldn't be sleeping on the Lord and, you know, start going into some hoop session. Now, we, we're not going to do all that. We just don't stick to the text. <laughs> and the, amen. I have a little commentary a little bit later. <laughs> amen. So then here it says in question number four, who is the bridegroom? And the bridegroom is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Hosea chapter two, verses 19 and 20. He was writing to Israel. And then I'm then let's put a bookmark in uh, Revelation uh, 19, seven through nine. I just want to share a couple of scriptures. I, one that he wrote Hosea in the book of Hosea, he wrote to Israel. And then the other one in Revelation 19. And I pray that, so as we read this, as we read this text, remember that this text still connects to chapter 24. He's, he's still, he's still, he's still getting after, <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? He, Jesus is still getting after what we talked about in 24, right? Remember in 24, <laughs> remember in, in 24, he talked about, he talked about what is that? What question he asked them, right? When when they um, they went out. Remember in chapter twenty four and one, Amen. So that's why sometimes we gotta look at the continuation message. So th when they went out and departed from the temple in twenty four and one, the, the disciples told to him like, "Show them. Look at the temple. Look at the buildings, right?" And then Jesus is like, "Look, I'm telling you right now, there won't be one stone left on another that won't won't be thrown down." And they asked like, "Okay, Lord." Well, ask him privately. Tell us what the what when when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the of the world, right? So he's still going he's still going on about this, right? Not I'm not owning that in a bad way, but he's still speaking about that. He told them already about what the wise and faithful servant in 24. He told them to be ready. Now he's like, I'm giving you all a parable, right? I'm gonna mention I'm gonna give you guys another example of what I'm talking about. I've already told you already. You got to be ready. I told you actually a couple times about being a faithful and wise servant. Now in chapter 25, I'm going to talk about foolish and wise, right? We're still talking about what the wise do, but now I, I gave you a little bit about, about, about the foolish too. Amen. So, so the Lord is still, is still talking. He's still coming with the parable of the ten, uh, talents. He's going to talk about the 10 virgins right now. We're going into the talents. Um, and then we're talking about the, the final judgment, right? The sheep and the goats. Amen. All right. So in Hosea chapter two, uh, verses nine, uh, what is it? 1920. Hold on. Let me get there back. Let me get there back again. 1920 he says, and I will, but I'm reading from the Amplified. He says, and I will betroth you Israel to me forever. 
and I will be betrothed to you, uh, to me in righteousness and in just, in justice, in loving kindness and loyalty, and in compassion. I will betroth you to me in stability and in faithfulness. Then you will know, recognize, appreciate the Lord, and respond with loving faithfulness. What I learned over the years as a believer and in my own relationships is that love is a commitment that you make to another person. It's not just a feeling. A lot of us look for, I want to feel the, goose, the goosebumps. I want my hair to stand up. I want to receive candy and roses. And I want to have all these emotional uh, interactions of love. Love can be those things. But love ultimately is a commitment that you make to another person. That regardless of the ups, the downs, no matter where you're at in life, I'm committed to you. And Israel has had their moments where they have turned away from God, many moments where they've turned away from God in the scriptures, throughout scripture. And God has been faithful. God has been committed. When you look at your life, how many times have you been unfaithful to the Lord, unfaithful to your responsibilities, unfaithful to the resources that God gave you, but God gives you grace, he shows you mercy, and he's always there. Never leaves you, never forsakes you. That's love. Love says, I'm there in the thick of it. I'm there in the thin of it. I'm there in the good, and I'm there in the very bad. I'm your day one, right? The Lord, the Lord is even our day one. He can be the day zero. You know what I'm saying? The day, <laughs> day negative one. You know what I'm saying? When you're talking about having some day one friends, right? Shh, Jesus has been there. Even when we didn't know him. Even when we were was when we were going on our own way, trying to live our own life in the world, the Lord had his eye on all of us, watching us. And some of us, as we was unsaved, wilding out, you know that, oh, man, that was God. You knew. You knew that was God. You knew it was God interceding for you while you was acting a, a straight donkey. Come on now. Commitment. Drawing you to him. So in that, as he's committed, then what can we take from that? Because that's a, we're going to be, that's us, because we have been engrafted in. So this is also to us, right? He didn't write it originally to us, but we're also, as we're engrafted in, we're going to have the same, that he's being betrothed to us, amen? To forever, we will be betrothed to him forever. That's something for us to look forward to, Amen? in righteousness and in justice. And he's calling us every day, calling us to live like him, calling us to relationship, calling us. And we'll get to that in a second here. So let's go to Revelation 19, uh, 7 and 9. Amen, Yolanda. Little old us. He looked on us. And the beauty is, you know, love, I was talking to my, one of my brothers, James, today and we was talking about <laughs> we was talking about how you know when, when love you know love um, we have to let love have his patient you know have let love have a patient work in us right or let patience have its perfect work in us but that doesn't mean it means that love is not always going to work on our work schedule on our time schedule on our timeline right amen there's going to be so many times when 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 patience is going to work completely different than what we want God's going to love on us, but his love may not always look like what we want it to look like. It may not always come in the manner in which we need. Amen? Because, you know, like I said, when we let patience have her perfect work, think about what we do for our children sometimes. Sometimes our children are expecting us to love them one way, but we know the best thing for them is something else. So we give them the something else. They may not like it initially. They may not like it for some years. Hey Amen. There's things that our parents may have done to us that we didn't agree with. We're adults now, but then we look back, we're like, man, he was right. Man, I appreciate what she did. Man, mama, mama had my back all along. I didn't think she did at the time, but she did. So when we let patience have her perfect work, patience is going to work at in its own schedule, got its own work schedule, not working your nine to five, right? Working, working a three to ten, right? Ten. 10 to 7, some other schedule other than what you want. But knowing that when we let patience have our perfect work, it's going to be good because God loves us. 
God loves us too much to leave us where we're at because he desires a relationship with us forever. And as much as we want, he will. there's a point when we can say, Lord, I've had enough. But as much as we will take him and accept him, he'll continue to continue to grow us and to sharpen us and to help us and to prune us and to put us through a lot of difficult, challenging situations, right? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from delivers us from them all. But what happens as we go through these challenging situations, if we can see the situation from his perspective, we can understand that he's using it to grow us, that we look a little bit more like him. That's the goal, that we look a little bit more like him. Amen. So then we come into the the going back to, to the to the message, going back to Revelation. Let us rejoice and shout for joy. I'm reading from the Amplified. Let us give him glory and honor for the marriage of the lamb has come at last. Come on, y'all, at last. And his bride, the redeemed, has prepared herself. She has been permitted to dress in fine linen, dazzling white and clean, for the fine linen signifies the righteous acts of the saints, the ethical conduct, the personal integrity, the moral courage, and godly character of believers. When you think about this, because Yolanda and I had to deal with this this week, and, and it was a very emotional time when you talk about emotional intelligence. And I had to think about ethical conduct, personal integrity, moral courage, and godly character. That's not always going to be applauded around other people. People aren't going to applaud you for being ethical or moral, morally responsible, or having moral courage. Oftentimes, you may be lied on, talked about, cheated. But that's when you go to Matthew 5. I was in Matthew 5 this morning meditating about that. Amen? Sometimes when you are in these areas of ethic, you know, being ethical and having personal integrity, people around you are not going to celebrate that. They're going to see it as a means to take advantage of you. So in those moments, you have to remember. you got to get in the word and remember, blessed are you. You're blessed. Right. Because there's a future and a future hope. And then God is telling us to to pray for them. Right. I may be on my sermon Sunday. I don't don't know. But to pray for them, because in many of those cases, and I was talking to Elon about this, it's an issue of the heart and their hearts aren't right with God. And though these individuals around you may talk bad about you and they look on your moral integrity and they look at all the moral courage and your integrity, your godly character. Right. They, They see it as something weak. And they see something, someone that they can use and get over on. Like, man, as Matthew 5 says, look, you're not getting over on me. Because ultimately, you're going to stand before God. So that's why we need to have a, a different type of heart. Not a heart that wants to see justice and see them pay for what they did. Because if, if we got what was coming to us, man, we'd be in some trouble if God gave us what was coming to us. What we earned from him. All of us earned a lot, a whole lot worse than what we received from God. So then we need to have the same heart that he has to pray for others because the Lord wants them to be in relationship because he says in his word that he's slack in his promises because he don't want nobody to be lost, right? It's not his will that no one be lost. And maybe sometimes, y'all, and I just thought about this as I'm talking now, maybe sometimes God has us interact with these hard, difficult, lying, cheating, no good you know, evil people because they need some intercession. They need some people to be praying for them. Come on, y'all. That made me think about that woman on uh, Sanford and Son. You old no good, you know. (laughs) I can't remember that woman's name, but I just remember that little wig she had on. Hey, God bless you, Sister Washington. So maybe God does it for that reason and then also to sharpen us. And that's why God has been putting me through some of this. He's like, because I need you to grow. I need you to mature. You can't allow this to keep being the, your stumbling block anymore. You got to grow up. It's time for you to mature in this area. Amen? Because God loves us too much. But what happens is when we begin to show ethical conduct, personal integrity, moral courage, and godly character, man, they know. Because people know when they've been outdone. They can lie on you. They can say whatever they want. But when they go to sleep at night, they know. They know that they did you wrong. They know they're not right. And some of them may even try to fix it. 
Amen? You just keep living for God. It's not in vain. You living right for God may seem strange to the world. The world may want to take advantage of it, but man, I promise you, man, you are putting, you are putting in treasure in heaven. You put another coin, right? Another coin hit the coffer in heaven. Another coin for, for where, for where you, your true treasure is. Amen? Not here. Up there. So in the world's eye, it looks like you, you getting taken advantage of. But the Bible says to pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. Amen? Because they need to come to Christ just like you did at some point. And we can't forget that. Amen? Because it's about relationship. He wants people to know him. He is delaying his coming so that people will come to know him. He is not slacking his promise. What is that? First Peter? Hold on. I want to say first Peter three. But I don't know. Nah, buddy. Oh, I'm gonna find it in a second. Hold on. I thought it was in the first Peters. And sometimes, you know, you got a, you got a word in you. Um it's okay not to, you know, to look it up. <laughs> Second Peter three and nine. Okay, it, it, I said the three and nine, but I thought it was First Peter three. Second Peter three and nine. Amen. Second Peter three and nine. Let's let's go there real quick. Let's go to Second Peter three and nine. I'm gonna read that from the Amplified just to just to expound it. Amen. All right, y'all get there. The bridegroom is waiting. Because he wants to have as many people as possible in the marriage, in the feast, in the wedding to come. We ain't just here just to come to church and hear a good word. Not saying that I'm I'm judging myself as being a good word. But I'm just saying in general. I'm not just I'm not, we don't just come to church for high praise. We gotta understand. The Lord does not delay as though unable he were unable to act and is slow about his promise as some count slowness, but is extraordinarily patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. And sometimes, y'all, sometimes the situations and the people we run into, it may be so that we can pray for them. That is one more person to intercede on their behalf, that Lord show them mercy. This person has taken advantage of me, They've done me wrong. It, it, you know, it's not right. Whatever you got, it's not right. But Father, I understand that the violation that is between you and them is much greater than what they've done to me. Vengeance is yours, and you said you will repay. And I will release it into your hands to do whatever you choose to do, even if it means that you want to be merciful to them and forgive them and, and not strike against them what they did to me. Come on, y'all. I had to be there this week. Emotional intelligence, y'all in the class, y'all going to get the story. <laughs> if you in the class, I'm not going to tell the story here. It's not for here. Amen. So that's what we that's where we at. That's the level of the gospel. Where I'm not looking at my wrongs and, and, and that's a process. We got to be meditating on the Lord and stand before him. Amen. Because I want to be in the marriage supper of the lamb. Don't you? What about your brothers and sisters that's doing you wrong? See, that's what we got to have a heart for. These people are lost. Those people coming to get you, man, they lost. There's a, there's a, they, they're not going to hell. They're going to the lake of fire that's waiting for them. And somebody needs to be praying. We need to have a heart to pray for the people that do us wrong. That's where, that's Matthew 5. And in through Matthew 5, he don't even talk about like God's going to, by you, by you praying for them, I'm going to give you this or I'm going to give you that. He said, no, if you want to look like, like my child, then you're going to be loving your enemy. You're going to be praying for them. You're going to be doing good. You're going to be seeking their good. God bless you, uh, Steve. Pray that you're doing well. Oh, excuse me. I was just talking to you today, talking about y'all today. Well, uh, somebody went down to Tucson. I was like, man, I got family in Tucson. I was telling them, that, man, this is probably a good time of the year because it's probably not 1,000 degrees out there right now. <laughs> that was one of them places, man. It's so hot, man. I be feeling like like hell is right below you. <laughs> like I remember, I was out there. I visited out there one time, and we was in the pool. We was at, it was at we was at the pool, and the ice cream man was there. And the ice cream man never runs out there. 
Like, and one time we heard him, man, we ran outside. I ran out there with no shoes on, man, on the asphalt. Man, my feet was burning. <laughs> it's like, I ain't getting no ice cream today. <laughs> it's super hot out there. <laughs> so it should be real nice right now. <laughs> well, we appreciate you, man. Thanks for joining us. Laughter is good medicine. Amen. So just remember, you know, to pray because you never know where a person is. Amen. You, even though a person may have did you wrong, that's all they know. And sometimes people need to be, they need to see what godliness looked like. And sometimes by doing that, bring some godly sorrow to them. It's like, man, I did these people wrong. God, God will bring it to them. But you got to give God the space. You got to be in the right frame of mind to let God move on their hearts where I'm not trying to fight for my way. And believe me, that was a little bit hard for me to, uh, this, this week. I had to write some messages. I did get a little emotional. I ain't talk out of turn. I ain't call nobody out their name. But I had to watch my words and watch the way I texted while people was lying and saying things that definitely wasn't true about me, about my character. And having to, to, to curate what I'm saying, regardless of what I was treated. And then to be able to walk and pray for them. And while I was walking and praying for them, off of the scripture, off of Matthew 5, God reminded me, was like, Hamp, this is why we pray. Because they're lost and they need they need." This is why we should be praying. Come on, y'all. Amen? So then, that's right, Sister Washington, we need to be able to respond Christ-like. So then that's why we be slow, right, quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us. I've been really slow these last, like the last month or so. I've been very patient about some things. I haven't been, you know, I'm sure Yolanda's like, it's like shocking off for her. Because normally I'm a person of action. I'm going to make a decision like right away. So I've been slow on a lot of things. And it's been blessing me actually. Like, like being slow actually is a good thing. Like not being slow like lazy, but like, okay, let me meditate on this. Let me wait. See what, let me, let me allow God to minister to my heart first so I, then I can move out. Amen? So it's been good. Yeah, you could probably make a, a, a potato out there. You can bake some cookies. <laughs> Boy, that's, that's, a hot, that's a hot place. <laughs> I used to think that about, about um, you know, because, you know, hell is in the earth. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you do some uh, research in the scriptures. So I'd be like, man, like Saudi Arabia, Texas, you know, these places must be like right in the higher hot spots. <laughs> hell rises a little bit higher in these, in these areas. Amen. All right, let's get back in the text. Okay, so when the bridegroom comes, number five, says here, when the bridegroom arrived, which of the ten virgins were prepared to meet him right away, right? The wise. They were prepared. They had what they needed. So then what did the foolish virgins ask the wise, and what was their response? So they asked that they could have some of the virgins' oil for their lamps. But it wouldn't have been wise for the virgins to give their oil, as they may not have had enough for both groups. Right, we're ready now. So then this means, now, I don't know if this, this may not be in a text. So this is like Hamp, this is the Hamp Lee version, right? What is this, the HLV? So in the HLV commentary, it may mean that there's going to be, there may be foolish people around you every day. And sometimes dealing with them, cause, by dealing with them, it may cause you to lose a little bit of your stance in Christ or your ability to be ready for him. Come on, y'all. We know some people like that. People by their behavior, by their actions, things they want to take from you. And there'll be days when you're like, look, you know, I, I'm going to have to maintain my current stance because giving to you means that I can't give to Christ. I can't be who I, I'm supposed to be in him. And I'm not going to sacrifice my standing in Christ to, to give you something or to be doing whatever, right? So it's those, those certain times may be. So this wasn't the time of scripture, right, where when give to those who, who ask of you, right, who want to borrow of thee, give it to them. That wasn't, this ain't the time. Because by me borrowing and giving to you, I lose out on something because I'm ready. You're not ready. But I'll tell you how to get ready. Amen. Go go to the store. and go, I don't know what's going to happen, but go to the store. Amen. So what happened here? When it says in question seven, who was allowed to enter into the marriage? The virgins who was ready, right? And so the ready means it was, they were prepared. So then again, like we talked about in previous times, are you ready? 
Are you ready to meet the Lord? Amen. Question number eight, this last one, and then I have a little bit of commentary and we'll close. The other versions came to enter the marriage as well. Number eight, when did they arrive and what was the Lord's response? The virgins arrived at the door. They came back, door was shut. He asked that they open the door. But he said, I, I surely, but he said, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, this is the Amplify, I do not know you. We have no relationship. Right? Now this was, and amen, 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 Norman, thank you so much. Because your connections matter. And, you know, speaking of that, Norman, there was a time when, I'll share this real quick. I'll try to be quick. I was in South Korea, and I was in the Kojic Church, and uh, the superintendent for, for the area came out, and as I was shaking his hand, the Lord said, be very cautious of your connections. Not saying it was against him. I don't, I don't think he meant it toward him, per se. But he said, just as you can use your name, right, you can use their name, right, because sometimes we join an organization or we're, we're in a company, right, and we're like, hey, I, I work for Walmart, I work for Target, I'm in the Air Force, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Just as you can use their name, they can use your name. And if you're, if they're, the name and the people that you're connected to are associated with evil, doing people dirty, lying, what do you think people are going to say about you, Right? It could be the same thing. And then what Norman's description, Norman's sharing in first in first Corinthians, right? When you think about who you are related to, who you're hanging out with. Remember when we was growing up in school, you would hang out with your friends and some of you start wearing some of the same clothes. Y'all start having the same laugh, doing some of the same stuff. If some of your friends was up to no good, man, you wind up doing some of the same stuff. So then you got to sit down there and make sure that um, that you're very mindful of your relationships. Amen. And, and sometimes you got to be real hard about certain decisions and say, look, I can't hang out with you. My relationship with you is going to do damage to my life. Now, when I first got to in the military, this is back in 95. 95, I get to, to uh, Japan, and there was a case of a group of uh, military members that were alleged, allegedly raped a minor. And this was in on the, I'm on the main island, right? I'm in, I'm in, and then this was in Okinawa, in the small island. So then, but when this goes off, man, it's like, you know, a lot of protests, like, you know, you know, get the military out of here, what have you. So this is just like, we get there, this is just going on. So we, I go to, so I wasn't saved at this time. Yet. So I have a group of friends I hang out with, three guys. And so you know, I just met them, I'm new. Right, we go out to the clubs a couple times. I, I wasn't really a club person, but I, you know, I go to clubs. So we come back to the club, <laughs> and come back from the club, and we in the room, and there's some Japanese girls, and, and one of the guys is, is you know, doing some stuff, and she's saying something repeatedly. And I was like, what's she saying? <laughs> they was like, she's saying no. I said, she said no? I was like, I looked at him, I was like, dude, I'm out. I was like, I'm out. Now, that probably wasn't the, the way I should have handled it. I understand that, I was young. I'm in the moment, I'm from Compton. This is my only, like, my last legal option in the military for me to do something positive with my life. I'm thinking about what just happened. I just left. I never asked them what happened, and I never hung out with them again. Never. Didn't even worry about it. Like, I'm not getting caught up because I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right? I'll, I'll, I'm just there hanging out. I didn't really even want to go to the club because I was never even a big club person. Right? I'm just hanging out to do something, but just hanging out doing something is around the wrong people. I don't want to catch a case, right? Because I'm in the room. So then you never know what can happen. So then, you know, what, so some of the guys took offense to that. One of them didn't, because one of them kind of understood. He was like, man, I know, man. I know that, man, they always wilding and stuff. I'm like, dude, you need to stop hanging around them. But some of them didn't, and I didn't care. Because I understood that certain people's behavior and lifestyle could be detriment, detrimental to my own. I'm like, that's not the place I'm at in my life. Amen. So certain people, you may need to cut off that you know, like, look, this person may not be good for me right now. There are times where we begin to, there are times when I'm saying, okay, look, I'm going to minister to you because, you know, even though I am a Christian, I'm saved and you're not, I'm ministering to you. Amen. But there are some times that that person's ways begin to minister to back to you and it affects you. Somebody ministering to somebody. 
So if it comes to a point where you're not strong enough to handle this person and their behavior, you need to walk away from them. And this isn't, hey, Lord, Lord, please send someone their way. Right now, that's not me. Maybe one day it can be. And I have a friend like that. Where, you know, initially I, I had to separate myself from him. Years later, I'm in a whole different space. So I'm back to, to minister. Earlier on, like, no, nah, man, I can't, you know, you're tempting me. We're having some problems. I got to roll out. So then that's when you're using some wisdom. Thank you, uh, Norman. I appreciate you sharing that. Marlon, you too. Man, I appreciate that. So these are things to think about. Like, I still love you, right? And we still have to have a heart to pray for people. Even when, I, when, when it comes down to, look, my relationship is detrimental to my relationship with Christ. Our relationship together is detrimental to me and my relationship. So I need to just pray for you. But I need to get myself to a place where maybe I'm strong enough, right? And some of us know some people like that. Some of us know what I'm talking about. Amen. So make those decisions to make sure you're in a good space, you're in a safe place, and you can grow. You don't want to hang around people, right? Even like with, with Norman Sharon in, in 1 Corinthians 15, you think about Psalm 1, you know, verse 1, right? You know, Blessed are you when you don't hang out with certain people. You don't take certain type of counsel. You're not standing in certain places around certain people. Sometimes just being around, and we know being around the way, hanging out, you see people doing a whole lot of dirt. There's a lot of people in jail right now because they was riding a car, right? Somebody goes commit a crime in a car, does a drive-by. They had no, you know, they were in the car just getting a ride. They didn't even know what was going on, but now they're in prison. Accessory to murder. Right, or something, or attempted murder, or something else. I'm like, dude, I was just in the car. What, I didn't even know they was doing that. I didn't know that they, that's what they was going to do. Caught up. So be very mindful about where you are and what's going on. Hey, Amen. Like I tell people all the time, I always take a little bit of company with me all the time. Hey, Amen. Always taking a little company with me everywhere I go, all the time. No matter where I'm at. When I was in Europe, Compton. <laughs> when I was in Japan, Compton. When I was in South Korea, Compton. <laughs> no matter. Hawaii, Compton. Everywhere I go, I take a little bit of Compton with me. Praise God for Compton. Amen. A great place to raise your kids. Come on, y'all. It is. It's a, it's a, it's, you know, don't, don't believe the hype. Amen. My sister live in an area right now, man. It's super quiet. <laughs> if you, if I took a, if she took a picture of her neighbor, of her street and said, this is Compton, you wouldn't even believe it. Man, Compton is a great place to raise your kids. Now, there are some places that that, that live up to the hype, but for the most part, man, it's good. I lived in Compton, never had to deal with one single drive-by, never was robbed in my neighborhood, never had to worry about nothing until I left my neighborhood. Because around in my neighborhood was all the Crips. I lived in blood neighborhoods. Bloods don't mess with folks. Crips mess with everybody, even themselves. Right? They, they check in their parents' pockets. <laughs> it seemed like out there. Hey, man, look, all right, let's get this done. All right, y'all, I, I appreciate y'all my commentary. Okay, so let's get into this. So when you think about this relationship, right, the, the, the unwise, the foolish versions, they knew the bridegroom. They knew about the bridegroom, amen, and they knew where to go. But they hadn't prepared for his arrival by seeking a relationship with him so that they would be ready prior to the doors closing. Come on, y'all. There are some people that know where the church is. Come on, if you from you from LA, I talked to, to Norman, right? On the on the corner is a church, check cash and place, liquor store on every quarter, just about. Right? You know where the church is. You know, you know about Jesus. But but coming to Christ and being ready for the wedding and being prepared is something completely different. It's different than, oh, I know about God. I throw a little bit of money in the, in the thing. I watch some, some social media, some people on social media. It's more than that because he wants a relationship. He told them, I don't know you. We have no relationship. He's looking for a relationship. So let me share with you real quick four points about the cycle of a relationship with God. This cycle of a relationship with God, amen, this, 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 this um, cycle of relationship well, it happens at a, the initial point of salvation or where you come to a point when you say, I want to make a decision to place my faith in Christ. And this will happen continually as you walk with him. Amen. 
So when, so question, so the first point is that I think, I appreciate you sharing that, Rose. I just kind of paused just to read it. So the first point is we have to acknowledge a need for him. That's what normally comes about that, right? Amen. Thank you. You can know you can know God about a person of God, but not know them. You sure can. Amen. So number one, we're going to acknowledge the need for him. This is in our initial, I'm in need of salvation. And this is everywhere we go. Like in this moment, in this season, in this situation, I got to acknowledge I have a need for God. I need I need answers. I need help. I need deliverance. I need his strong hand. I need a shield and buckler. Come on, y'all. I need a light. I need a pathway. Come on. I need him. This is my cycle. And so so Yolanda just shared it all. So we just going to keep on pushing. So number two, right? I got to place my faith in him because I understand I have a need. Now I'm going to say that God is not my doing. I can't, I'm not strong enough. I don't have enough knowledge, right? I don't have enough money. I don't know enough people. I got to put my faith and trust in you. Amen. So I'm putting my faith and trust in you. Amen. Having the oil, uh, uh, Norman said, having the oil in their lamps reflects their accepting the invitation to follow Christ. Amen. Amen. So now I'm accepting the invitation. I've acknowledged I have a need. I place my faith in him. So now I fellowship with him. So when, as I fellowship with him through prayer, worship, and the word, amen, what happens is I begin to live to be like him. Remember the quote, man, it was a beautiful quote. And, I, and, and I, it wasn't my quote on, on new version, right? It's like the, acts of, the act of prayer will deliver us. But it's like, no, the, the, the what is that? Let me, let me get the script. Let me get it right. Hold on. Let me, go, let me get that right. I don't want to mess that up. That was good. It blessed me. It says, while the answer to prayer delivers us, the act of prayer transforms us. I was like, man, that was so good. See, y'all got to join us for you version. Amen. Daily you version. You get a chance to read the Bible. There's short, we have short messages. And then we went through the entire Bible. I'm go, I just, I've been doing it for several years. I'm going to run it back. So we'll read the entire Bible again next year. So if you want to be down to say, Hey, look, I want to get a, you know, the, the topics, we have a short one that's on different topics. And then we have the long Bible that, you know, throughout we'll read the Bible in one whole year. Amen. So if you want to be about that life, man, join us. Just hit me up and say, look, send me a link. Send, send me information on how I can join. And then I'll, I'll add you to our list, man, and keep growing. But see, in our fellowship, that's where the transformation begins. As we begin to continue to work with God, as we continue to fellowship with him through word and prayer and worship, we're being transformed. We're being conformed to be like him and to live like him. So then I begin to make decisions that are like him. I begin to think like him. I'm ready because I understand what he's looking for for me in this season. So this, this season that I go through is a continual cycle that we continue to go through. Acknowledge him, a need for him. I place my faith in him. I fellowship with him and I live to be like him. You will, if you have looked throughout your life you have gone through this cycle with God in, in several different areas and in several different ways, but it's continuing this entire cycle. Amen. Amen. So that's all I got for y'all today. I'm going to close with that. Unless y'all got any questions, comments, concerns, I sure appreciate all of you joining us today. Y'all bless me. I appreciate the, the, uh, your comments and uh, back and forth. It, it definitely uh, helps. So what y'all got for me? Any, any other questions before we close out I think on Friday we still have women still are going strong with their with the book amen with Lisa Turkhurst for giving what you can't forget and then on Saturday morning we have a uh, Saturday afternoon I'm sorry at 12 p.m. we have our emotional intelligence class we're in the final we're in the home stretch just two more left we're talking about empathy this week and then we'll talk about social skills kind of closing that out and then again if you want to get into some finances you want to high five for your year and you want to start your year off just kind of cleaning house financially we're going to start with our book high five finances it's going to be a five-week course on uh, just kind of getting your getting the house in order amen so i said i'm gonna rewrite the book so what's in the book right now needs to be rewritten i've known that for a long time so i have completely new material so we're going to write that as soon as i finish this class 
then we'll get that book going and then we'll put that out there. So if you're interested in any of these things, it's free, right? No excuse. So you can't go before the Lord. Lord, I didn't know. Like he gonna, he going to replay this. If it's like a screen, God's going to be like, um, this is what, what Hank was saying. <laughs> no excuse. So if that's you, look, y'all, the Bible says when you humble yourself, you'll be exalted. I have humbled myself financially and I've received help. Right. Even now, I'm going to humble myself and God's going to exalt me. Come on, y'all. Um, OK, so let's see. Debbie said, does this mean you can lose your salvation because the foolish started out with prayer? Let's go to Matthew 7, 21. I appreciate you asking the question. This is always my answer for this. Because some people, you know, there are some people that believe once saved, always saved. So I don't know if this question kind of goes along with that. But this is where I'm at with that. Um, I'll read the scripture and I'll give you, this is my personal thought concerning once saved, always saved. So in Matthew 7, 21, he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the, enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day when I judge them, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name and done many miracles in your name? And then I will declare to them publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who are banished from my presence, you who act wickedly, disregarding my commands. So what I believe this to mean, see, when I was not in Christ, I wasn't thinking about doing nothing for God. These are people that knew God, that didn't even, not even just knew God, but it is, you don't even see people in churches that are prophesying driving out demons and doing miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. You see a person like this in the church, you're going to be like, man, that person has a front row seat in heaven. They, they're going to be in the 13th seat, right? If there was a 13th seat before the Lord casting their crowns before him, that person's in that seat. And then all of a sudden you hear, you are away from me. I know you're not. You're like, what? How? Because it's a problem with the heart. Because you can see a lot of people get involved in doing for God that they forget to be in God. So I do believe that a person can lose their salvation because you can walk away from God. God's not going to make anybody stay. The greatest gift that God has ever given mankind was free choice. That's why you have the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in Genesis. If there was no tree, then, oh, everybody's going to live right. That means everybody on the street going to go to church. Everybody living for God. No, the greatest gift is to choose. But when we come into Christ, we know better. It's a narrow road. See, we think, it, you know, wide is the gate that leads to eternal destruction. Narrow is the way. So we think that just because everybody's in church, that they go into heaven. No, you're not. You got to be, it says you got to, that means you got to regard his commands. You who acted wickedly by ignoring what God said in his word, by ignoring what God told you to do, right? How many people be like, oh man, God dealing with me about that. You better get up and go do what God told you. Because if the, if, if the trumpet sounds, the sky crack, you in trouble. Because then what? You knew for the five, last five years, God told you to go do this ministry. And you've been sitting on it. You disregarded his commands. Not me, not no sir. I don't care who me, who in this church. I'm gonna go do what God told me to do. I just pray that you come along with me, because God has told us. So it's not about the outward appearance. See, this person had. See, this person was doing a lot of things. See, because God's name doesn't return void. So you can have people that don't even believe and and speak in the name of Jesus, and things will happen. Because demons respond to the name of Jesus. Right. You, so you hear about people and kids and doing different things. They don't even know what they're saying. They talk in the name of Jesus because the Lord's word never returns void. God ain't going to allow you to shame his name. He's going to let that thing go forward. He's going to let it go forward. He go, it's going to work and do what it was called to do. But on the other end, it's you that's going to have the problem. 
There was this one prophet that said that uh, that God is the only employer that I fire you and let you keep working. I was like, oh my, Ooh, oh my. I was like, oh my. See, this is why in in the uh, in the church, what is it? Is it? I don't know if it's Laodicea, the church that um the lukewarm church. Which one is that? Who is that? Hold on. That's the last scripture. It's in uh, Revelation 3. I want to say 3. All right, let's go to Revelation 3 and um, and 15 real quick. And, I, and I'm going to close on this note. So I am a proponent of that. Debbie, you done pulled that out. Because <laughs> normally I don't share the hot button. But I am. I, and, I, and I believe that one that I don't believe in, I don't subscribe to one say, one always say, because a person can choose to walk away from the Lord at any point. Any of us can choose to walk away from the Lord. And when you think about Job and his wife, she was like, curse God and die, right? You know, walk away from God, curse him and die. He's like, no, I'm staying. See, so this should be an answer for all of us as we're moving in Christ, because in Christ, he says that we're going to go through many tribulations. And these tribulations, some of them are so hard that it's going to drive you to a point where it's like, am I going to curse God? Am I going to walk away from Christ or am I going to keep going? Satan wants you at that breaking point. He wants you breaking. That's where he wants us. So then we get to the place where we say, I'm going to give up. It may not be like Job. See, he knew that if I take all of this out, if I take his family, all his stuff, everything he owned, everything other than his wife, he's going to curse you and die. For some people, it could be, I'm just going to get you a flat tire. You're going to curse God and die. Come on, y'all. It could be, you're just going to lose your job. You're going to curse God and walk away. Satan is trying to bring you to the breaking point because he understands that. See, God is so good in those areas. He even, you can walk away and you can come back. You think about the prodigal son. You can walk away and depending on what the sin is, if it's the unpardonable sin, that's a whole different story. But you can sin and you can come back. Lord, forgive me. That's the beauty of the gospel. That's love. See, that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about, love being a commitment. I'm committed to you. Even while you're out there in the streets wilding out, I'm here like the prodigal son. The father is waiting. I'm waiting for you to come home. Come back to me, son. Come back to me, daughter. Don't be out here in the streets. That's what God is trying to tell us in the midst of the world that's wilding out. So much evil. And it looks like evil's winning, y'all. There are days when you're like, man, it looks like evil's women. But he says, don't be envious of the e of evildoers because their reward one day will be an eternal separation with God. That is the worst thing that can, I promise y'all. Y'all going to understand one day that the worst thing that can ever happen to a person is eternal separation from God. What do you think Cain's problem was, right? When he was like, don't, don't separate yourself from me, right? It's the worst thing that can ever happen to a person. That can ever happen is for God's spirit, for his presence to be left from a person. That's going to be the worst, eternal separation. Amen? Amen. So look look at this. Now look, he said, I know your deeds in, in Revelation 3, 15. That you are neither hot, invigorating, refreshing, nor, nor, nor hot, nor cold, I'm sorry, cold, invigorating, refreshing, nor hot, healing, therapeutic. I wish that you were hot or cold. But because you are lukewarm, spiritually useless, reading from the Amplified, and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth, rejecting you with disgust. He would, it's almost like God is saying, I would appreciate, I would respect you and appreciate you more if you just said you was cold. I ain't even in this, God. I don't even want no parts of that. I know what you're asking of me. I don't want that. It's almost like he just says, I, I respect that. I respect your decision. Because at least you ain't out here you know, clowning and disrespecting and dishonoring my name. At least you ain't out here acting a donkey. And then people looking at me, and then I got to be on the, Jesus on the cross again being crucified because you out here clowning. And we bringing a bad name to him. I'd rather have you just say you was cold and you don't want none of this. You don't want this smoke, right? Amen. All right, okay, I'm, all, I'm off the soapbox. That was like 10 minutes. <laughs> all right, I, I hope I, I answered the question. I, I hope I gave a, 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 a good answer. If, it, if it's not, just say, no, nah, brother. Or we can talk. We can talk offline a little bit later. But that's my my thought on 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 this scripture. I, I do believe a person can walk away from Christ. I mean, God's not gonna make you. God's not gonna make a person stay if, if somewhere they don't want to be. You know, that's that's love. That's the greatest gift that God gives you. 
is the opportunity to choose. It's one of the greatest. And so it's just our opportunity to choose. And when we're in Christ, y'all, like he says in John 16, right? right? <laughs> like in this life you have tribulation, but be a good cheer uh, for I've overcome the world, right? And Psalms talk about many other afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from their all. You're going to go through it. But in each situation, in each moment, we got to say, Lord, I'm here. I don't know how I'm going to get through it without you. I can't do it on my own. I need you, Lord. Right? I got to acknowledge that I have a need for him. I got to place my faith in him. I got to continue to worship and, 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 and join in fellowship with him so that I can live like him. Amen? It's this constant process. We, and each situation is different. Each season of our lives is going to require something different from us. Sometimes several different things at the same time. But what it is, is giving our yes. Remember when I talk about being committed, commit, being corrected, convicted, challenged, but most of all committed? This is what this is about. Lord, I'm committed to have a relationship with you. No matter what I go through, no matter what I experience, no matter what people have done to me, I'm standing. I'm not going nowhere, Lord. There are some days when I may fall, but you best believe I'm getting back up again, Lord. I'm standing again. I'm going to dust myself off. I'm going to ask for repentance, and I'm coming. Amen? Because I'm going to be ready. And some days it's messy. It doesn't always look clean and perfect. And some days we don't get it right. That's why we weep with those who weep and we rejoice with those who rejoice. That's why we walk alongside our brothers and gently encourage them, right? Galatians 6, 1 and 2. I can't think of the scripture. I, I can think of the scripture, but not the, the words. Amen? So that's when we go into our brother. Amen? We're lift, uplifting one another. We're iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens the countenance of another. Because sometimes we're not always on, dude. We're not always on. We, and, we, and, we, and shame on us for treating people like they should be. Even me. Like, I'm not on all the time. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Norman. I appreciate that. We call on the Lord. We need him. The gospel is about needing him, not trying to do things in your own strength, but acknowledging that, Lord, I need you. And God will be there to help you. He may not, as the song says, he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. And most of us that have lived long enough can say, can attest to that, like, that's true. God has been there. It may not have been when I want it or how I want it, but man, he was on time. Amen? All right, what else y'all got for me? I appreciate you asking. Thank, thank you so much for asking that. Because somebody else may have the same, same thought. Amen. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, you know, we still got some free shirts, so some free T-shirts. So if you want a free T-shirt, man, just hit us up. <laughs> I'll, shoot, I'll shoot you uh, some screenshots of the pictures <laughs> of our shirts, and we'll mail you a shirt. No problems. No worries. You know, we just got some stuff. We just got a stash of them. So if you, if you, if you like a shirt, you like some T-shirt swag, you know, that's, that's Yolanda and I. We like a good T-shirt. We like some T-shirts. So if you, if you like one for free, just shoot us a message. We'll, 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 we'll shoot you a shirt. We'll send you what we got. Pictures of what we have left and the sizes. We got your size. We'll send you a shirt for free. No, 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 there's no strings attached. If you choose never to follow the ministry again, it doesn't matter. That's not, we don't give you a shirt with a string attached. There's no, there's nothing like that. It's just, hey, we just want to bless you. Amen. Amen. So God bless y'all. So I appreciate y'all joining us again. Um, any questions, comments, concerns, you always can feel free to shoot us a message. We are here to help you. We want to help you live for God, regardless of where you're at in the world, regardless of whether or not you're attending another church or whatever. Like, if you need some help and you have a question or anything I can do to assist you, shoot me a message. Amen? Amen. So then, uh, yes, yeah, Sister uh, Sister Washington, we'll, 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 shoot you a, we'll shoot you a message. So I, I'll try to shoot you a message after this. Uh, Lord willing, if not today, tonight, uh, tomorrow. And I, I sh I'll send you what we what picture what a picture of the shirts we have, and then um, and then if we have the sizes, um, I think uh, Yolanda did a great job to inventory them. I, I tried a long time ago, but I lost track. <laughs> oh. Amen. She keep it straight. God bless all of them. Amen. All right. With that, let's close with a word of prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for this time you've given us, O oh God. Father, we thank you for the study in the parable of the ten virgins, O oh God, and what you taught us about love and about relationships and being ready, Father. Help us all, O oh God, to make a commitment, O oh God, to you, Father. Some of us have been challenged today. Some of us have been committed, uh, convicted, O oh God. 
some of us, Lord God, has been corrected on where our lives are and the path that we're going in, Father. But, Lord, I pray that you'll allow each and every person, Lord God, to make a personal declaration to be committed to you today, Father God. That they won't be like the one in Matthew 7, 21, Lord God. They'll be the ones, Lord God, that hears, well done, like good and faithful servant. That stood through the test of time and the trines and the, the hard days, the affliction, Lord God. The days when they was lied on, they was cheated and took an adva taken advantage of, Lord God. They kept standing, Father God. Those people, when they stand before you, Lord God, have tears in their eyes, Lord God. And as you wipe them, Father God, you say these are the last tears you'll ever, you'll ever shed in your life ever again for all eternity. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your, for your grace. I thank you for your promise, Lord God. Let us keep looking for the to the hills, Lord God, for our health, Lord God, and for our eternal home one day, Father God. This is not our home. This is not our home. And let us not prepare to have a great life on earth and not even think about what's going on in heaven in the next one, Father God. So help us, Lord God, to keep our minds stayed on heaven and to put treasures where they truly belong. And that's in heaven with you, Father. We love you, Lord. We thank you and we bless you this day, Lord God. Strengthen your children with your grace, with your grace, Lord God. Give them the mercy, help that they need, Lord God, to keep standing for you, Father, and to be a light unto the world that others may see you, Lord God, and draw closer to you, Father God. Give praise and honor and glory to you, Father. We love you and bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. We appreciate you. Uh, like I said, any questions, comments, or concerns, please shoot us a message. Keep us in prayer. Amen. God, is, uh, Satan is coming for us in this season. Amen. We want to keep standing for God and want to be faithful. So we need your prayers. You know, my family needs your prayers. We got a lot of stuff going on. At the same time, we are being attacked on several fronts. Um, and I'm not playing. Like, we got a lot going on. And so we need your prayers. Um, we want to be faithful to God. We want to, in this season of our lives, and we don't always share that, you know, and a lot of people tell us we don't look like what we're going through. And uh, I don't want to wear that as a badge of honor, but, man, we need we need some prayer. So just if y'all don't say just Jesus help. <laughs> Amen. We want to be faithful in this season. This is our growing season. This is our time to conquer. But there are some things we're facing right now. So please keep us in prayer because we want to have wisdom and we want to lead with grace and we want our words to be seasoned with salt. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us today. Until the next time, y'all. Y'all keep looking to the hills. Keep trusting God. Keep believing. Keep standing. Amen. We're going to keep lifting each other up. Iron sharpen iron. Amen. God bless you. Love you all. Y'all take care.